How are you feeling, Thumper? <laughs> if you're complaining about your nickname again, I suppose that means you're feeling better. Um, hey, I know it's been a few days, but I do want to talk. Hmm? Oh, there's light ahead. Good catch. Mm, looks like some merchants are setting up camp. Perhaps we could ask them for any news further along the road. Or maybe they've seen... Well, we'll never know until we ask, right? <clears throat> Hello there. Uh, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to cause any alarm, but I was hoping for some information. Have you seen or heard of a woman with dark curly hair, rare crimson colored eyes, and pale skin? Oh, you've seen her. Truly. When was this? Three nights ago. Do you know which direction she was headed? Oh. You're... Your son escorted her to Ville Rouge. I... I assume you're waiting here for him. How long? I mean, how long does it normally take to get from here to Ville Rouge? Uh, no. I'm sorry. I'm... I'm fine. Just very road-weary. <laughs> Thank you for the information. We'll not disturb your camp with our presence and move further up the road. <laughs> yes, yes. Have a good night. Hmm? I'm sorry, Thumper. Am I... am I a bit pale? Um, I'm just feeling a bit nauseous. Can we... can we just make camp? You can ask anything you'd like after I'm... after I'm off my feet. Oh, thanks for... loading up on wood. Again. I can feel the chill settling in for the night. The merchants... Uh, they didn't say anything necessarily bad... I'm just... I'm just worried about their son. I never told you why I came hunting for this particular vampire, did I? Well, yes, it is the job of clerics to exercise evil spirits and perhaps to hunt down the stray evil creature. But we don't go out of our way to look for them. We tend to be sent after them. I, however, happened upon this entirely due to sad circumstance. I had a friend in Eisted, a guardsman named Isaiah. We both know that guards can be a bit condescending and cold and the type to never listen at times, but he was one of the good ones. Soft and gentle toward everyone. Firm when necessary, of course, but he made for some good conversation and an even better drinking partner when I finished my duties at the temple. His lover, Freya, was a fiery woman and one of the best patissiers I had ever known. He wasn't getting paid much as a guard, as you can likely imagine. Wanted to gift her a ring. Ask Freya to marry him. So he went to the job board and found an escorting position. A young noblewoman was passing through Eistead and needed protection to Cloud's Rent. The pay was hefty way more than you normally get for such a position. 
I voiced my concern and suspicions, but he was set. He left Eistead and was gone for little over a month, which was odd considering the travel time. When he came back in the night, he wasn't the same. He was thin and worn. I thought it was traveling fatigue, but... <sighs> he wouldn't come out of his house. He ignored Freya's pleas to see him. Only until one night. She asked me to go with her. A comfort in case she was rejected again. But... I kept my distance, not wanting to put pressure on either of my friends, when there was obviously a conversation that needed to be had. When he took her inside, I thought my job done. I was getting ready to leave when the screams came. I practically threw myself inside, and I found him covered in Freya's blood. I... <sighs> he wanted me to officiate his wedding. And I had to... I had to... In and out. Right. Their families wanted answers. And I couldn't give them any. So I went looking. And found the noblewoman. Oh, she was a piece of work. Called herself Valer. I doubt that's her real name. I questioned her caught her in several lies and pressed her about what happened to Isaiah while he was on the road. That's when she attacked me. All fangs and glowing eyes, nails as sharp as daggers. And, well, you know the rest. <sighs> Thank you for calming me down. It never, it never fully settled with me, seeing him like that in the end. The image of him hunched and wide-eyed with hunger will always forever be burned over the images I have of him smiling. Like, my final memory of him is of some feral beast. I don't know if getting rid of Valer will bring me closure, but the thought that she's doing this to other people, other families, it makes my blood run cold. No, I'm, I'm not strong. I wasn't courageous for making the hard decision. I... Look at what I've done. I went chasing after a creature, not knowing fully what exactly it was, or not wanting to realize what happened to my friend and what he had come across. I was being stupid and foolish. It was by sheer dumb luck that I even made it out alive after my first encounter with Valer. If I had been stronger... That merchant's son wouldn't be apart from his family. If I had been stronger, I wouldn't need... I wouldn't have needed to find you. You're trying to stop my train of thought, but I can't. I can't stop thinking about it. Because if I had been stronger, if I was stronger, I wouldn't be afraid that I'd lose you. Yes, I'm afraid 
of losing you. I couldn't bear such a wound in my heart. Someone who makes me feel so safe. And yet, someone I want to protect with all of my being. I can't put you through this. I can't ask you to continue on this path with me. It's not right. But I cherish your choices. I cherish your decision. And I respect you for having come with me. For having the courage to do this. When it seems like a fool's errand. Your nickname? I call you... <laughs> I call you Thumper because you thump things to death. You intend to stay no matter what I say, don't you? You're a stubborn fool. But I suppose that's part of your charm. <laughs> this... Is this... Are you comforting me? Or are you... Are you continuing what you started in that barn? I thought so. And I'm glad that one of us has the courage to admit their desire without words. Yes. I want you. Kiss me. Please. I'm sorry if my lips are dry. I'm... I'll stop. I'll stop talking. 